In this video, you'll learn how to replace inline sprinkler valves. We'll go from this to this. This job in the Country Club neighborhood is an ongoing project since the system is 40 years old. Today I'm replacing four inline sprinkler valves because they are in varying states of failure. The first thing to do is remove the valve boxes, being careful of pipes and wires. Then we need to dig out below the piping we need to deal with. The piping and valve on the left is three quarter inch, which is out of the ordinary for this property. All the others are one inch valves and piping. What does this tell us? That more than likely this was originally a drip line. All these valves are Toro valves. We're going to change them out to Hunter PGV valves. I discussed the valves I prefer in this video here. While I was digging, I found this hokey wire repair wrapped in plastic. This is the common wire. I dug it out more to make it easier to repair. I cut the bare wire and created a fresh connection with a watertight wire connector. When I cut the right two valve assemblies off, I saw something scary. The three quarter inch pipe coming off the feed pipe is thin wall pipe instead of schedule 40 like on the right. I definitely had to be super careful with that so I wouldn't break it. When you're splicing new valves in, your measurements and angles must be accurate within an eighth of an inch. I had to be sure the left valve assembly was turned just right so it would be perpendicular to the other pipe. The right valve had to be turned so it would be straight in line with its connecting pipe. I put the one by three quarter inch male adapters into the valve using three wraps of three quarter inch Teflon tape and a little smidge of Teflon paste. Then with the elbow placed, not glued, on the vertical pipe, I could get my measurements for the short pipes. Once I got the short pipes glued into the male adapters, then I could glue the entire assembly in place. Since I have more flexibility with the connecting pipe, I glued the assembly onto the vertical pipe first and then immediately onto the connecting pipe. I repeated this with the right valve. With the right valve, I dug more soil away from the connecting pipe so I could have more flexibility. Now for the left set of valves. With the right set of valves, I was able to cut the valve assemblies off. But with the left pair, I will need to spin the valves off so we can retain the existing male adapters on the outlet side due to the fittings on the left side. There is no space between fittings to cut and glue new fittings above where you can see it or below. To do this, I removed the bonnets so they'd spin off easier. Otherwise, I'd need to dig more through those roots and mud and wires. I just used my Milwaukee drill and a Phillips driver to remove the screws. I found that the inlet piping assembly has enough flexibility so I can keep it intact and reuse it with the new valves. This is lucky, 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 because that isn't always the case. Sometimes we have no choice but to rebuild the entire manifold, piping and all. When I spin these valves off, they need a place to go that direction as I turn them. So I'm going to have to cut this section out first before I try to spin those off. Once I cut that right there, I found that I may not need to cut this down here. I was going to take this whole section out and then reuse it, pop it back on. But I found that I've got some flexibility in here. I just got to be super careful so I can pull that back. All I need to pull it back is a, a little more than an inch. And I've got that, so hopefully that'll work. But I'm going to spin the new valves on now. I noticed that this was loose. It was flopping around up to here. Yeah, I dug dug into there to see if I could see another fitting or something. I was hoping this wasn't busted in there. This was this is actually what was in there. We didn't even need this. That is going to make this putting this back together much easier. So the 
feed actually comes this direction through the manifold. I just assumed since the well is over there that the feed was coming from over there and coming this direction, but that's and coming that way. I thought it was coming through that assembly, but it's not. One of the things I always do when I replace valves down in the ground is untangle the wiring. Oftentimes when I come into these jobs, they got wiring um, tucked under one pipe and then twisted over onto another and then onto another. And so it's all tangled up and I like freeing up the wiring. So I've got this all freed up now. The shutoff valve over there at the well, the handle is closed all the way, but water's still barely seeping through. And it's coming out, least path of resistance, it's coming out here. Before I removed these valves and had these cut off, the water was coming out at the lowest spot, which was down there. Once I got those valves on and had cut this assembly off, now the least path of resistance was right here and I'm leaving that open so that the water can go out here. If I cap that, then water would be coming out one of these, probably this one here, and it'd be in my way, interfering with what I was doing. So I'm letting that drain out here instead. Now I have measured and cut my short pieces of pipe and glued them into the couplers, so now I can glue the entire assembly into the mail adapters. While the glue is drying, I'll work on other stuff like the wiring. I see these two wires that go to the rightmost valve going a different direction than the other wiring. These two are shallower too. My experienced guess is that these were either part of an add-on or the result of rerouting a wire due to a wire break. At this point, it doesn't matter, but this knowledge may help in wire troubleshooting that will occur later. When I dig things up, I take note of everything, like an archaeological dig or a crime scene, clues that may come in handy later. After the glue time was over, I put the solenoids back on and turned the water supply on and tested the lines. Everybody was happy. No leaks. So I reconnected the wiring and now it's time to put the valve boxes back on. When I arrived, there was gopher dirt in the right valve box and fresh gopher mounds in the lawn. So to attempt to keep gopher dirt out of the valve boxes, I'm installing a layer of heavy duty weed cloth under both valve boxes under the piping. I use these Fisker scissors that I got at Home Depot to cut it. I cut the cloth large enough to wrap up the sides to cover any openings. Now the soil has been reinstalled, leaving out roots and other junk. Here's the finished product. Here's a pile of the roots that were removed from this work area. That can go in the green waste can if you have one. The plastics are not recyclable. They just have to go in the trash. The right valve box area intentionally had a lot of rock in it from the original installation. It made it very tough to dig out. So I left that out when I put the soil back. The owner can use that soil to his advantage somewhere else on the property. So there you have it, all done and swept clean. Every valve manifold is piped differently, so I'm just teaching concepts in these videos. If you'd like to learn from another inline valve replacement video, watch this one. It was piped differently than this one. Remember the free downloads that can help you with your irrigation, and also remember the resources site linked below that has most of the products for sale that I've discussed in this video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.